We're going to work on this move. It's an anti spin. I'm going to explain it in terms of chucks, though. Okay. Uh, basically, we're doing a, a front to back to a back to back wrist roll with a modification. So, real quick here the nunchuck, front to back, right? And then a back to back, like that. You don't have to know the front to back or the back to back to do this with a staff, but it will definitely help you. I'm gonna use this staff for a second to give you a, a better idea. Here's the center of your staff, you're grabbing, uh, if I'm gonna go counterclockwise with my left hand, I'm grabbing to the left, because what I'm imagining is whenever I do a roll, um, the center point of the roll is my middle finger right here, because it's rolling across the back of my hand, and then it's returning, right? So if we could spread this out into space, it would be half a hand here, half a hand here, and then the middle, fin uh, the middle finger would actually be the middle point of it. So we want the middle of the staff to move across the middle point of my hand, or wherever it's following, and be able to grab it. We're gonna start with a front to back, and grab it like so. Now this is different than nunchucks, because nunchucks would be a back to back, would be across this wrist here where it would roll up, and we'd keep flipping it this direction. It'd look like this. Um, this is nice for chucks because chucks, when you're doing a back to front or a back to back, you'll notice it bends. Do you see? Like if I was just to release my hand and there, these chucks were floating in air, this is very bendy, right? So it doesn't take any effort for this chuck to come back into my hand because the chain is bending. Well, when you have a staff, it's a little bit different. When you do it like this, it's gonna create a little bit, you're gonna have to reach for it a little bit more, uh, you have to work it a little bit harder. So what I wanted to do was show you a little trick that you can use when you're using a staff if you're having a problem getting the back to back, and it's this. Once you do your front to back, and you're getting ready for your first back to back, the moment your thumb reaches 12 o'clock, your pointer finger right here is gonna switch over to the other side, and instead of, instead of starting it off crossing your wrist, you're actually going to cross this little pointer finger. So here's what it's going to look like. Front to back, like we've been doing. Hits 12 o'clock, pointer finger rolls over to the other side, and it's going to start rolling over your finger, across the back of your hand, and catch. So here's the two again. Here's the way that I think you should do it. As soon as it hits 12 o'clock, your finger rolls over, and then it's going to finish the roll. Okay, so it rolls over your finger, it goes over your finger, and grabs across your hand. The old way is, You'd roll it, it'd come across the back of your wrist and into your hand like so. This creates, this is a lot more space and a little bit more tricky to do. So let's do a couple of them. Back to the front, uh, front to back. Okay, once we get that, as soon as it hits 12 o'clock, our finger's gonna turn over, whoosh, like this. And then we're gonna let it roll across our finger, across the back of our hand, and catch it again. We're gonna get it back up. Once it's 12 o'clock, we're gonna put our finger over again and do the same roll. And it'll look like this. See if I can do it slowly. So here, pulling it to 12 o'clock, fingers crossing over, it's rolling across my finger and I'm catching it. Like that. And again, the other one would look like this. Watch how much motion my hand has to move. It has to work it a little bit more. And then watch this one. See? All right, practice that. It may take a little while, that's okay. This move is, is, is uh, it's actually, think of it as two points, okay? The first one is where I hit 12 o'clock and I, and I move my finger over, and then the second one is the roll, okay? So one and two, okay? The finger over and then the roll. Uh, whenever you're doing like anti-spins, you're, you're basically doing a circle going the opposite direction of the circle that you're spinning. For instance, if a circle is spinning this way, an anti-spin would be revolving the opposite direction. Do you see that? So, if it was going the same direction, it would basically be saying that this is going uh, counterclockwise and my arm would be going counterclockwise, okay? This is the same direction, has a different kind of a feel, but if this is going counterclockwise but my arm's going the opposite direction, it creates like this spirograph look as I drop it. <laughs> it creates a spirograph look like this. And this is what we're trying to create but with one hand. So. When I said break it down into two points, we're gonna have three dots that our hand will follow. This point here, this point up here, and this point over here, okay? First, I want you to practice this infinite roll across your finger at this point, and then practice it up at this point, 
and then practice it at this point, you're gonna realize something very odd and very strange, which is most people spin right in front of their chests, so they don't realize as you go outward, you have to compensate the uh, balance of it. That's why I want you to practice this point, this point, and this point. Now, when do you change points? It's really quite simple. The, the time to kind of feel when you should change point is when you switch to your pointer finger and when you roll it across your hand. Remember how I said, remember there's two, there's like two steps to it. So as soon as this rolls to my pointer finger, I'm lifting it up. And as soon as it's rolling across my hand, I'm pulling it over. It's rolling across my pointer finger, rolling across my hand, pointer finger, hand, and then in one motion, it looks like this. But you're gonna to wanna to first start, start off in very simple points. One, two, three. And you're gonna pull it across all at the same time. <laughs> 